Tonight, Henrik Lindmark is going to speak and share God's word with us and his life. And uh, I'd like to just introduce Henrik uh, really quickly before you. He is um, married to Annika. Uh, she, he has a beautiful wife, and he has four really special kids. Uh, Annika and Henrik, they are a part of the leaders team in Vineyard Norden. And Henrik and Annika are also pastoring the church in Norrköping, Sweden. Uh, they, um, this church has actually been a great role model, I think, for us all. It's been challenging us because their church has more than doubled in the last years. And God is doing some really wonderful things in your church. And you've encouraged us so much already with this. Um, Hendrik is also leading a company called Styrka, which in uh, Swedish, in English, it means strength. And this company works with people, um, giving them an opportunity to get work in construction and restoration, if I understand right. You can probably explain a little bit more, but it is a, um, just a, an amazing thing that Henrik started a few years back, and we see a lot of good fruit from that, uh, what you've planted in that work. And also, I want to say last but not least, Henrik has created these screens behind us this year. Isn't that amazing? It's fantastic. So, let's give... Henrik, a warm welcome. Welcome, Henrik. Bless you. Thank you. I need to fix this first. Hello, everyone. Great to see everyone again. And it's always, when you get introduced like that, it's... I always feel embarrassed because it's always a team effort. And it's always, always more people, better people that do better work than yourself. I got one, one rule when I start a thing that I want to employ people or work with people that are better than me. <clears throat> work with people that are more talented than me. Otherwise, it never works. And that's, that's I think it's, it's very important. So I get so many around in the church and in the company who is doing an amazing job. As, as Steve mentioned, we have seen a lot of things happening both in church and, and also in the company. Yeah, I will share some stories today. And, uh, and it's, it's such an inspiring, life-changing experience. And it's turned my life around the last three years. And I will share a bit about that today. I want to talk about being a heaven entrepreneur, a heavenpreneur, a heavenpreneur. I think we are all called to be a smell of heaven. We are all called to impact society. We are all called to do our best, what we have. And that is so important, that we understand that our role is so much more important than we think. That I want to talk about today. Um, Steve mentioned my wife, and... and uh, I want to tell a story. There was a guy, he died, and he went to heaven. And there was a, 
a greeting of angels, and he saw different lines for every man coming to heaven. And one line was so many people, so many men was stuck, stuck in that line. And then another line, it was just one guy. So he went to and asked the angel, so, so what's the deal? What's the deal with this line system? And he said, well, it's, it's two lines. You have two choices. One line is for those guys who just follow the wives. And those were massive line of people, of men. And the other line was just one guy. So he went to the guy and, sorry to introduce, sorry to, to disturb you, but what's the deal with you? You know, how, how come you're just standing here? So he turned and he looked into his eyes and he said, my wife told me so. <laughs> I owe everything to my wife. She carries so much of, of this work, we do it together as a couple. That's very important. I want to tell that. It's not my company. It's not as a pastor of the church. We do it as a couple. We do it as a family, in fact. We share everything with the family, with the kids. Because this is a family business. And being here is a family business. Being here is amazing. It's amazing to join in worship. It's amazing to encourage each other. So take the time, introduce yourself to a new person, get to know as many as you can. This is the best time ever. That's why we keep coming back, isn't it? So I want to share from, from uh, the second Corinthian today. And this is a word I got a couple of months ago. And, and when I was praying about this, what, what I should share tonight, it's still ringing these verses. So I wanted to talk about that. 2 Corinthians 5, and verse 16. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be Reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Working together with him, then, we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, in a favorable time, I'll listen to you. And in a day of salvation, I have helped you. Behold, now is the favorable time. Now is the day of salvation. Let us pray. Is that okay? Let us pray. Father, we just want to open our hearts tonight. Holy Spirit, come and give us all that you have for us. We ask for your mercy. We ask for your presence. We ask for 
healing, we ask for power, whatever we come with. Holy Spirit, come in and release new life. Release, open up heaven for us and touch us with your word and with your hands tonight. We long for you. We love you, Jesus. Amen. The biggest doubt, if you count the differences of different kind of doubts, the biggest doubt that we have as Christian is that we don't believe that what we have experienced is enough, that we are saved or not. Have I experienced the Holy Spirit? Isn't it just a fake? Everything, that kind of doubt, that's the mo most common doubt we have. And in our naughty countries, we wrestle with, with a philosophy or kind of a law called the Yante law. We all know it. We all know that it, it's a strong power. We have a hard time to think good of ourselves compared to others. And also that we have trouble, that we are not good enough for everyone. So it's both ends. We're like, that, like a doll, you know, what called a, the don't fall. It's always going back to a position. Like we, we are in, the, in common, or we call it lagom in Swedish. We're not good enough, but not bad enough. We should keep in the middle. And that is a thing that we hinder us, because when we try to lean into God more, when we try to step into his presence more, or going ahead a bit more, or stepping ahead of being a leader, there's something that we need to check with everyone else if it's okay. Am I, am, what, what do everyone else think about me when I'm doing this? On the other hand, we, we don't want to be a burden to people. We don't want to be a someone that need help. So we keep that also. So we like the doll that always, you know, going back and forth. And the thing is that the person or the thing that betrays us the most is ourself. We are the one that speak down and look down on ourselves and saying, I'm not good enough. I'm not, not this great guy who, you, who can step into this and our end. We are the one who look down. We are the one who talk bad to ourselves. And the only thing that can make us free is to gaze upon God. It's to gaze upon Jesus. And Jesus is always looking back and saying, look at me. I'm your source. And when Paul is write, writing this text, this is the thing he, he speaks about. He's saying, don't think the way you did. Don't think in the flesh. Don't be thinking the way, the corrupted way, the wrong way you always have done. Think new. And he says, I would, the way we thought about Christ was wrong. Because we waited for Christ to come and be this massive uh, warrior, chief, king that would rule with, with sword. That was wrong. That was fleshly to think. And for us in our culture, we need to think, God won't just be the one we, we push in the bottom and, and he will give us answer. That not the God we, we know. We have to think new. We can't think according to the flesh. The corrupted old way. We have to think new. We have to get rid of it. And Ephesians 4.20 said, 
get rid of it, and then take on an entirely new way of life, a God-fashioned life, a life renewed from the inside and working itself out to conduct as godly currently reproducing his character in you. So we need to be changed from the inside out. We need to stop thinking the way we did. We have to break this law, this yanta law, lifting each other up. When we step into new area and boldness, we have to lift each other up. And the one who feels a bit like a failure, we need to lift each other up and break through this fleshly thinking. Because it doesn't matter how much we try to push. We need to refresh our mind. Our biggest battle is in this skull. The biggest battle is in our, our brain, in our mind. We need to imagine the change. The change in our life. If we keep reading verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. If we say that we are in Christ, we are a new creation. That's an amazing statement. Saying the old life, the, the way we think was the past, and now we are in this new creation. We are a new creation. That's amazing. The old has passed away. We are sons and daughters to the living God. We don't need to look back and say, well, I need to fix this. I need to earn my right to God. He's saying, you are a new creation. We need to imagine that. We need to imagine the change of being a new creation. We need to be that. We have to leave the old way of thinking because we are in a mission. Last summer, we, after we came back to, to Norshipping from the summer camp, we, we said we need to have church, still have church, because we have quite among many newcomers. So we had barbecue in the park outside the church. And we bought some, some extra food, some sausages, and, and we, we, we gave them away to people in the park. Mostly homeless people. So we invite them here, here's a sausage. And, and uh, that grew. So next time, next Sunday evening, four people came and asked for sausages. And after that, a couple of weeks, ten people came and asked for sausages. And it grew. It grew each Sunday. So when the fall came, we said, we can't stop doing this. Maybe 20 people coming, asking for sausage and help and clothes. And so we said, we need to, to take care of this. So we started to invite them into the office and, and, and uh, we gave them some coffee and we gave them some food stamps. And, and, and it grew and it grew and it's still growing. Today, it grew to each Monday, at least 50 people get food, get lunch, get clothes, get uh, uh, someone to sit with them and, and pray and, and talk. 
And it's amazing. If we start do something, God will do it, the rest. It starts with one little thing. As such, it grew in a year to a ministry, helping people. We had to employ Mia, who is the social pastor, to take care of it, to organize it. One of the guy called Anders came and he, he came a couple of Mondays, but one Monday we met him outside of the church and he said that I have slept in the park for two nights, I have no clothes, I have no, no, nothing to eat and I have this kidney pain, I have kidney stone and I'd, I haven't couldn't afford the, the med, meds for it. And we asked, okay, let's, we, we can probably help you. But let's pray. Could, could we pray for you? And we, we lay our hands and we prayed and he, he said, it's gone. The pain is gone. Instantly gone. And it was Monday, so we, wow, that's great. But you need clothes. And you need food. Yeah, do you have? Yeah, of course. And we invited him in church and we gave him food and, and we gave him some, some clothes and we sat down and he started to cry. He started to cry and he said, yeah, I can't explain it, but there is something that keeps holding me. And what I have experienced today, it's too much. I can't keep doing this yante law, being good. Being, you know, take care. I can't do it anymore. I have to give up. So we talked about Jesus. And we talked about that's exactly what we all do. We give up and we give our lives to him. Do you want to do that, Anders? Yes, I want to do that. I want to give my life. So we did. We prayed and... He cried and he cried. The pain was still gone and he had new clothes and he has food. And, but I don't have any place to stay. So we talked about that. What could we do as a church helping him? So we, okay, let's, let, we, we will buy you some nights on the hostel. So you can, you know, fresh up. So we did. We made some calls and we, he, he had some, a room and hostel. And we keep coming back. He's keep coming back. And we talked about, so, so now he starts working in church, doing a practical service. He wanted to come to the camp. That was his biggest wish. But he couldn't come. I love that. I love that story. What we do is just being a new creation. We don't plan things. It just happened when God is involved. And we say, okay, we do the best we can. His story is that he had 16 years in jail. He lived his whole life as a criminal. One of the one high level of gang members doing the most terrible thing to people. He just gave it all up for a new life. A new creation. A couple of months ago, we, he got baptized. And, and me and my wife, we, when we baptized him, it was like a strong power came. It was totally a new person who stepped out of the water and was totally released. That's the business we're in. Guys, that's the business we're in. Doing the best we can. Being a church in function. At least try. At least try anything. At least try something. Not just sit and wait. And that is what Paul is talking about. We do as much as we can. 
because we are new creation. We are sons and daughters. And if we are sons and daughters, we are trusted rulers. The Bible t- teaches about we are the carrier of the kingdom. The kingdom is held, it's given from him. When the Father was giving the, 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 the mission to Jesus, and Jesus gave the mission to us, reconcile. First be reconciled to God and then go and reconcile. On the same mission Jesus did. Be reconciled to God. And it's so amazing to just step into his presence saying, I'm not good enough, but you have made me good. You are my father. You are my king. You are my Lord. You are the one who made me a new creation. That's why we can just celebrate this week. Worship together. Worship together as, as, as one. I have a two and a half year old daughter, Leave. And it's amazing to see her when we we say, do you want some ice cream? Almost always she she jumps out and shouts, yes, and she's starting to dance. (laughs) These nice movements like a ballet. God just showed me last night if, if, if we have a relation to this amazing being, the one who is both the, the beginning and the end, a king and a, the love and everything, he's just amazing. We can't express with words. But if we step into him and we say, I want to praise you, do we keep checking on the left and the right and see what people might think if I raise my hand like this, what might they think? think? What if, uh, if I'm doing this? Is that too much? Leave doesn't care. She doesn't care if, if the king was there. She would still dance and say, yes, I would ice cream. When we are in concert, Two years ago, I went to the Coldplay concert. And that's amazing to be part of. When, when 20 people just singing out loud and raising hands and dancing and shouting. Shouldn't be that on summer camp. Just being amazed, being marveled and praise him and lift him up and dance, whatever we feel who we are, and let's set free and do that. It's amazing to be part of. Let's do that. Let's encourage each other. Not, not thinking, well, I'm not feeling good enough. But guys, we are not feelers. We are believers. It doesn't matter how much we feel. He's still God, and he's still this amazing Jesus. So let's do some ballet tonight, <laughs> or tomorrow morning and tomorrow night and the day after and the day after and the day. We have amazing time to do that. Don't be living dead. We're not supposed to be living dead. Last Monday, I was trying to surf, you know, wave surfing. Yeah, you're laughing. It was horrible. I had a wetsuit on, it was, you know, mighty wind, and the waves just hit me, and, and I was, I, was, I want to try. 
So I went out to this board and it was too small. I couldn't get up to the board. I was under the board more than, than on top of the board. I was just tumbling around. The board just hit me on the side and I still got pain. I sand everywhere. I mean everywhere. <laughs> sand everywhere and it's the salty water just hit me and hit me and it was, I loved it. <laughs> People just surfed beside me like there was nothing. And I was still keeping, trying to get hold of, get up on the board. And I told to, uh, I asked uh, my, my nephew, you know, I have a, it's something wrong with my board. <laughs> and he just laughed at me and said, and he just went on. <laughs> so I realized it not, that's not the problem. The board is not the problem. But the thing was that I tried as much as I can. I loved it. It was tough, you know, trying to, to follow the waves and then go back again and then follow the waves and then go back again against the wind, against the wave. It reminds me of life. That's life. It's life that God just pours over us with love, with grace, but it stirs our lives up. And everything is tumbled around. We think we have this imagine that the God just comes like a father, you know, during his night. You know, he, his power, when he touched our life, everything is turned around. Everything is turned around. And he say, when you give your life, you will receive your life. Everything is changed. That is exactly what happened when we were out on the waves, like we sang. Give us boldness to be out on the waves. We have this nice picture of surfing. It, I don't know. Mom is here, they know. It takes years and years and years to know it. But the thing was that there were some people, maybe 10 or 15 people out on the waves, but at least 150 were standing on the beach looked out, enjoying the, the wind and the salt and the sea and looking at everyone's failure. And I think God told me that, you know, I'm, I'm so glad that you're in the waves. At least you're trying. At least you, you're trying to succeed or do anything. Guys, we need to get into the water. We need to get into and get wet. And get hit by the board and the waves and everything. We need to be in the water. Because that's life. That's the place where we get all the, the things hit us. Both the good thing and the bad thing. But I'm so weak. I can't be in the water. That's one of the most common things we say. I'm, I'm not feeling so good. I I'm, I'm have this problem. I have this kind of thing. I struggle with this and I don't know. I have doubts. The last story. From Matthew 5. When Jesus... You know the story about the storm and Jesus went over the sea and it comes to storm and he went on the other side and, and the demon possessed guy came running at him, naked, hit him himself with rocks. And Jesus spoke to the demons. It was five or six thousand demons, a legion, and the man was delivered. And he said, I'm free. And he got new clothes and, and he got a sense of he was, you know, got his mind back. And then he asked Jesus, when they went to the boat, Jesus and the disciples went to the boat again. And he's, he's asking Jesus, 
could I follow? In Mark 5, 18, the man begged him that he might be with him. And Jesus turned to him and said, Go home. I'm not allowing you. I'm not permitting you to do that. Go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has mercy on you. And he went away and began to proclaim the, in Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him and everyone marveled. We have this image of I need to be discipled, I need to step into, I need to know, I need to read the Bible, I have to know how to preach and I have to know how to, to give my testimony and, and I, I don't know how to, to be uh, this, and I don't know how to be, I don't, I'm, I'm, secu I'm unsecure, I'm not brave enough. Whatever it is that hinder us, Jesus is saying, you have enough. Go and change 10 cities. Decapolis was a region of city, 10 city. And he said, go and change 10 cities, you have enough. You're having a half hour with me. That's enough. Was that good discipleship? He had new clothes. <laughs> that was enough. And you have a story. You have a great story. So tell it and change 10 cities. And you know if you read two chapters more, from Mark 7. It says that Jesus was going back into the region of Decapolis. So people were so hungry after Jesus, they couldn't go back home. So they, they stayed. And the evening came and, and it was quite a far away from the city. So Jesus said to the disciples, send them, but we can't, they, they won't leave. They are so hungry for you. So he broke the bread and he gave, gave it to the people. It was a bread miracle. But the thing that made people in Decapolis so hungry for Jesus was the man in the caves. That guy with a half hour with some new clothes went out and told his story about the amazing Jesus. And 10 city was starting to be shaped, was changed. What about us? Do we have enough? Do we have enough for see a change and imagine a change for our culture? Imagine a change for our cities. Do we have enough? We are not good enough. No, we are not. But we have enough because we are new creations. We are sons and daughters and we can give our life to the city, to the people, to the homeless, to the criminals, to the rich. We can give everything we have. And that is good enough. It cost us everything. But that's the waves, that's the life we have. The company Styrka recently, we heard a rumor that in, the, in the city next to North Shopping. They called Styrka a sect. It was something mysterious. It was something connected to church. It was something connected to non-profit. It was something connected to giving a second chance. It was my, must be a sect. So it's starting to get a rumor around in the city. So people or parents to, the, to, the, to employees called the, 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 the sons and daughters and saying, 
You have to get out. You have to get out of the sect. When we start in the church, I mean, so things happen. The graffiti the church wall, and it had never happened in church in a building before. And it was a big graffiti and saying, "Church?" Question mark. Really? Question mark. Fix it. When we step out into the waves. And the waves start hitting us. It costs us a lot. But we will see major things happen. But it costs a lot. And I think that's why Paul is ending this chapter saying this. We put no obstacle in anyone's way. So that no fault may be found in our ministry. But as servant of God, we command ev- ourselves in every way. By great endurance, in affliction, in hardship, in calamities, in beatings, imprisonment, in riots, in labors, sleepless night, hunger. By purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, the Holy Spirit genuine love by truthful speech of the power of God with the weapon of righteousness for the right hand and left through honor and dishonor through slander and praise we are treated as imposters and yet we are true as unknown and yet well known as dying and behold we are alive as punished yet not killed as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many riches, as having nothing, yet possessing everything. That is life it's good and bad it's ugly and cute I'm, I'm, I'm the ugly and my wife is the cute one <laughs> it's always both uh, we have seen a lot of adversities lots of obstacles in the last year but seen major things happen. We have worked hard. Still, people are coming to church and to the company. And if we just felt, you know, if we just decided how we felt in every way, we, had, we should have quit for a long time ago. Cost us everything to be heavenpreneurs. But it's the best thing. We are not worth it, but He is. And we are called to be on His mission to reconcile the earth, everything in it, as it was from the beginning. To expand the kingdom, to see the kingdom expand in every way. To be a smell of heaven when we are at workstations or at schools, whatever we are. We are sons and daughters, we are new creations. We don't need to think like we did. Let's imagine that. You know, when we worked with these graphics, you see the mountains. And you see the the clouds. You know, the the rhythm of Jesus was that 
He went up to the mountains to be with his father, to be a son and receive presence and love and power. And he always went down. He always went down and gave his life, gave everything he had. And then he went up again to the mountain to, the, to be with his father. And if we don't give time for that, to be intimate with him, we don't have anything to give. But it's a rhythm. We can stay on the mountain because we have to give it away. Our money, our time, our effort, our strength, everything we have, we give it away. And then we see major change. We are, he teaches us to pray, your will in heaven as in earth. And we can pray, let's change Odense as it is in heaven. Let's change Helsinki as it is in heaven. He's giving us the mandate to change. Mandate to imagine and then go with that. To start dream the dreams of seeing a city changed. I think it's enough for today. I want it to be uh, not a heavy talk. I'm sorry for not being delivering it in as, as an excitement, but it, 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 I hope it will. I hope you feel excited. Wow, I could be part of this. I could par be part of the waves. I could try also to look bad in a wetsuit. I could tumble around. Let's do that. Let's try. Let's get out on the waves. Let's imagine on this week what could happen when I come back. I just want to, that we have time for praying for each other. You know, we are family and we have time to this. Time to lift us other up and time to, to, you know, tell the things that hinder us. Tell us about the, the thing that we, we struggle with. This is the place in the family to do that. So could we stand to, could we stand? And, and uh, I just want to invite the Holy Spirit. I had, I had this sense that, that there are people in the room that wanted to start over. To want to start over again. To step out of the old corrupted way and step into again the new creation, the truth. And we are the temple of the Holy Spirit, and He just loves to be part of our lives. He is already here. We don't need to pray and, and Ask him to be part. He is always, all the time with you. Because he is in you. But we need to pray, open up my heart so you have full access. So let's pray that. Let's invite the Holy Spirit and let him do whatever he wants to do. Holy Spirit, we ask you, 
ask you to open up our hearts. Come, Holy Spirit. More, come more, Lord. Holy Spirit, we ask that you can break off the old way. Give us strength to pull us out. Out of pride, out of lust, out of rejection into your life. Holy Spirit, come just with power right now, come with grace, come with love, come and sweep us out, come with a new wave of, of love. We want to be reconciled, Lord. Again and again, we need to be reconciled with you again. Holy Spirit, come. We will have some worship more, I think. Yeah. And now we're time to respond. And you, if you feel that I'm in the water, be in the water and praise his name. And if you feel, I want to be in the water, I want to be reconciled, I want to meet him again, I want to start over again, I invite you forward, and we have a lot of people who are going to pray for you. So I'm, I'm inviting you forward right now. Come, if you want a prayer. And if you want another thing, if you want to pray for something, something like healing or, or anything else, just come. Let's start tonight just to bless each other and love each other. And, and if you feel that you want to pray for someone, go and do that. Go and bless each other. So we welcome.